can't remember a finalist from Singapore in any... Well, well, they had the, uh, a swimmer called the Singapore Sling a few years ago, who was a pretty good 50-metre swimmer, who was a man. Uh, he wasn't too bad. He, he certainly got into games finals. I cannot remember. I don't think he did get a medal, but he was fast. And Kitson and Amy from Canada are in lane seven and eight. Jessica, Amy was one of the chances in this race, but she was very disappointing this morning and just managed to qualify for the final in lane eight. Now, let's see just how long they delay the introduction to these swimmers. They've tended to keep them out there far too long, in my opinion. I think as soon as they get there, introduce them. It can disrupt their preparation a little bit. They just want to get in there and they're behind the box now. They just want to get in the water and race and get it over with. Uh, talking about that girl from Singapore, yeah, it would be a sensational moment. Their first ever medal in swimming. But, uh, of course, the Australian girls, they're keen for a clean sweep. They talked about it this morning, the one, two, three. Another interesting effect is in lane three is um, Marion Mardine from Northern Ireland. Now, I cannot remember a Northern Irish swimmer getting up into a final and being some sort of a medal chance. Very close in the heats this morning. O'Neill and Thomas obviously out in front. We expect them to challenge for uh, the gold and silver. But the other swimmers, well, you could throw a blanket across the field. Jessica Amy even in lane eight. Outside chance for a medal. You know what I think's wrong here? That they're running the races off the clock. They're deciding that the race will start at a certain Ladies time. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, here we go. Introducing the finalists in the women's 100 meters butterfly. Swimming in lane one for England, Alex Bennett. Her qualifying time was 103.32, fairly slow compared to the sub minute swimming swimmers in, lane in the middle. Two for Australia, Ellie Overton. 1298 this morning. Excellent games for her. Performed brilliantly. In lane three, swimming for Northern Ireland, Marion Madine. Yeah, 10268, that was a good time. Swimming in lane four for Australia, Susan O'Neill. Commonwealth record holder at 5996. In lane five, swimming for Australia, Petria Thomas. 17 year old, keen to break the minute, the pride of Malambimbi. Swimming in lane six for Singapore, Jocelyn Yeo. Up to 102.87 to compare to those minute and sub minute swimmers in the middle. Swimming in lane seven for Canada, Shauna Kitson. 13.20. Swimming in lane eight for Canada, Jessica Amy. Now, was she was supposed to be the main danger to the Australians and she performed Finalists not too well this morning in 103.36, but the butterfly. interest, of course, mainly this in lanes four and five susie o'neill and to her right as we see it is petra thomas petria thomas they're on the blocks for the final of the women's 100 meter butterfly Away cleanly and a good start for both Susie and Neil and Petri and Thomas and Ellie Overton also got away very well as did Yo from Singapore in lane six. 25 metres into the race, it's probably Petri and Thomas just in front of Susie O'Neill. Overton going reasonably well. Yo from Singapore has gone out hard, but already the two Australians, as you can see, starting to take hold of this race. It's Susie O'Neill and Petri and Thomas going head to head as they near the first 50 metres. Overton's probably back at about third or fourth place as they touch for the first 50. Go round in 28-4-1, just outside Susie O'Neill's Commonwealth record. All three Australians going well. And a terrific turn from O'Neill. She's the first one up, stroking this game to about two feet over the rest of the field. Thomas coming now. Jessica Amy from Canada doing her best in lane eight, but I don't think it'll be good enough to catch these Australians. It's Susie O'Neill just in front of Petria Thomas. Ellie Overton is doing her best. She could be in an outright third position. It could be a trifecta, the first trifecta for Australia at these Commonwealth Games. Susie O'Neill in front. Petria Thomas trying out the challenge. Going to be a great finish. It's Petria Thomas. Yes, the same margin between Phil Rogers and the Englishman Gillingham in the breaststroke, 0.03 of a second. What a finish from Petria Thomas. She's 
absolutely tipped Susie O'Neill on the line. She led all through the race just about until when it counted. But it's the first Australian trifecta of these Commonwealth Games. Petria Thomas gold, Susie O'Neill the silver, and Ellie Overton the bronze. And Australia's dominance in the pool continues. Sensational swim and sensational finish from Petria Thomas. They'll be celebrating back home in Australia and probably no more than the town of Mullumbimby. The personal best for Petria Thomas now and the new Commonwealth Games record. What a great five. effort. And Sandra Sully is gathering all three ladies for an interview. Petria Thomas the gold, Susie O'Neill the silver and Ellie Overton the bronze. Well, congratulations all three of you. In particular, Petria, what a terrific swim. Thanks very much. It's a dream come true. Um, Susie Silver, very happy with it? Yeah, really happy. I'm glad we got one, two, three. So. It's the first time for the Games, isn't it? It is the first time. I'm just stoked that um, I could get up there with these girls. I always expected them to be there, so I'm happy. Now, Petria, a debut performance and a new Commonwealth Games record. Oh, I'm stoked. <laughs> it's insane. All the pundits have been saying your, your uh, preparation up to now has been terrific and you've been flying through the water. You absolutely love Butterfly, don't you? Yeah, well, I seem to go better at that, so, yeah. The Aussies tonight. Kira, now, you three, what's next? Oh, yeah. 200 breast and then the 100 breast, so we're going to have a big night. All right, congratulations to you all in particular, Petria. Great swim. Enjoy the night. Thank you. She looks a bit stunned, Norman, Petria Thomas. Well, I tell you what, she's 17 years of age and she's one young girl with a very, very big future. We'll take a break. Coming up next, it's the men's 200 metre breaststroke final. Canada's John Cleveland, a man who obviously enjoys the swimming and his life in general. Second fastest qualifier for the men's 200 breaststroke final tonight. As I said, ranked third in the Commonwealth and the defending champion. Well, if you just joined us, Australia has gone one, two, three in the women's 100 metres butterfly final. Here's a replay of the race. Take it through us, Norman and Rob. Yes, from the start, you see that the first swimmer up is Susie O'Neill. She got away to a splendid start. So did Petria Thomas just beside her. And right over on the far side in lane two is Ellie Overton, who got away well. Right there, the Australians are very close to first, second, third. That's right. First, second, third, right throughout the whole race, I think. Now, Petria Thomas and uh, Susie O'Neill have had some terrific clashes over the year. They've always been close. They've really pushed each other. They've been training at the training camps together. We see Susie's turn here. She's first to turn. And she's first up out of the water, and that gave her about a two-foot advantage over Thomas. But, of course, Thomas came at her from about the 75-metre mark, and Jesus was close down that last 25 metres. Yes, 59.96 is the Commonwealth record. They're just outside that. And as they come up now, with 25 metres to go, you see the power of Thomas, and they get closer and closer together, and the last stroke is really classic swimming. That's right. Beautiful last stroke. Really hit the wall full on. And Susie O'Neill just missed the gold medal in Auckland. Silver medal in this race for Lisa Curry, just on the finish, and the same things happened here. It was a great swim by Susie, but Petria Thomas, the gold medalist, and isn't she happy? And that margin was 0.03 of a second. Wasn't it Shakespeare who said, paddling palms and pinching fingers? Well, the, they've stolen the, the race again. Petria Thomas has won the race. They're almost ready to come out for the medal presentation. She's a, a big, strong girl, Rob. She must have a great future looking you know, forward to 1996 and beyond. They breed them well up in Mullumbimby, up towards the Queensland border. <laughs> for those barbecues, Norman. For those barbecues. And they'll be partying up there tonight, I'm sure. No doubt about that for Petria Thomas. I think probably her best asset is her legs. She's got fantastic, fantastic strength that she gets out of each kick. And um, they were just going stroke for stroke there. She didn't take any more strokes than Susie O'Neill the last 25 metres. But her, her legs really brought her home. Good, strong kicks. And that made the difference. Three one-hundredths of a second between gold and silver. And the difference for Susie O'Neill, uh, we've made the point by being beaten by that tiny margin, the difference for her is she goes out of the medley relay. See, she was beaten in the 100 freestyle, Karen Van Wordham will swim. She's now been beaten in the butterfly, and Petri will swim, and they will, those two will join uh, Nikki Stevenson, and of course, whoever wins the 100 breaststroke. And that's how they pick the team. And what a team it's going to be. It would be a great team, of course, Karen Van Wordham anchoring in the freestyle league. But uh, for Petria Thomas, I believe that's her best time. I'm not sure that she's gone under the minute before. She has gone under the minute. No, she hasn't. She was keen to do it. That uh, was her PB, though. PB, so it just makes it even sweeter. And from the Institute of Sport, she's been down at the Australian Institute of Sport, Petria Thomas, for the last two years. Here's the Australian team. 
Uh, on, Terry the Leach the there. Ball, yep. on this hot night, uh, interesting how the teams operate over there. There are four major teams, the, the Australians, of course, English, Canadians and New Zealanders, and they each have an area, but they change the area each night. They move up one by one, and the Australians tonight are in the prime position. Well, they've picked the best night. Now, tomorrow, they'll move right down to the far end, and each of the other teams will come up one, and New Zealand will be in the number one position. I had a wave there to Johnny Carew, Kieran Perkins. Coach. He wasn't he rapt. Wasn't he happy? And again, uh, I, I think, as I said before, I think they run, who they're starting now, they run, they're running this off the clock. Now, previously, you just start the session and away you go and just run it one after the other. Maybe the ugly head of television has reared itself again. CBC says that we want them run by the clock. Those comments came from Norman May, ladies and gentlemen, not Stephen Quartermain or Rob Woodhouse. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Glenn House went on screen now, just had that point of freestyle. Maybe he's just a bit disappointed, speaking with the psychologist Clark Perry, that uh, this is Patria Thomas' big moment. It was, only, it was our only individual event in the games because you needed to win this or to beat Susie and Ellie to get the relay spot. I think, Rob, that would make it a bit harder for her. Uh, Coming on one race, I mean, the other swimmers have, have gone in there and swum in several races. They've got the feel of the pool, the feel of the atmosphere and all that, which makes it an even better show by Patria. That's right, Patria will be looking past all the parents now. Uh, and the, the pool deck, surrounded by, of course, Susie O'Neill and Ellie Overton, who, without doubt, have the busiest program out of anyone in the whole games. And maybe that may have had an effect on them, I don't know. Patria Thomas... I guess you could argue it could work either way, but I think with Thomas, she's really just zoned in on this one race, just concentrated on that, and that's all she had to do. She wanted to win this, and she's done it. Well, that's Susie O'Neill leading parade. I, I just wonder if she looks at her career from now on, whether she should go up and concentrate mainly on 200-metre races because she put a fine effort to win the 200 freestyle. We'll see her again in the 200 butterfly. Uh, falling back a bit in the 100 freestyle. That was a great swim tonight. But uh, should she concentrate from here on, Rob, on, on slightly longer on, on the 200 land? I don't think so, Norman. She's a great 100 butterfly. She's the world short course champion in this event. She beat the Chinese girls, who are obviously a bit suspect. And that is a world-class time, just over the minute there. That's very world-class. And she's going to be right up there with, of course, Patria Thomas in the final, hunting for the medals at the World Championships. The 200, as you said, is the strongest event. She won the bronze medal at the Olympics. But uh, the 100 freestyle may be not as strong there. But uh, she can, she's proven before she can handle this program well. Over now to the course announcer. Mesdames et Messieurs, pour remettre les médailles, ladies and gentlemen, to present the medals. Mr. Michael Fennell, first vice chairman of the Commonwealth Games Federation. <laughs> Mesdames et Messieurs, la médaille d'or est championne du Commonwealth avec un nouveau record de des Jeux du Commonwealth. Ladies and gentlemen, the gold medalist and Commonwealth champion, setter of a new Commonwealth Games record, from Australia, Petria Thomas. One of the youngsters, just 17 years of age. Well, actually, actually she's 18. She's August the 25th. Well, that's uh, her birthday then, is um, in a couple of days' time. La Médaille d'Argent, the silver medalist from Australia, Susan O'Neill. And Susie celebrated her 21st birthday on the 2nd of August, uh, she's just 21, and Kieran, of course, Perkins on the 14th of August, and Matthew Dunn on the 2nd of September. Not too much celebrating for the birthdays, though, unfortunately, for those guys, but La what a terrific Rome, birthday present for the Maria Thomas. From Australia, Ellie Overton. And to complete the birthdays, Ellie was 20 on June the 16th. Her 21st birthday, of course, next year. The Aussie trifecta, one, two, and three. And another important team, Rob, you see it right there on your television screen. They really are team players, the Aussies, aren't they? T.J. O'Neill, she's obviously disappointed being the favourite, but they are team players. Joan Morgan Parnell, who competed for Canada in the 1950 British Empire Games and who has since medalled in gold, silver, and bronze in the world's and international Masters swimming events. 
Joan Morgan Parnell. Yes, way back to Auckland in 1950, and it's appropriate there that uh, one of the great competitors for Australia was our team general manager, the Lithgow Flash, Marjorie Jackson. The first clean sweep by the Australians. Their gold medal tally now stands at 14 out of 19 events. Thomas, of course, as we said before, from the town of Mullumbimby. She spent most of her early years in training at the Ballina Club on the northern New South, New South Wales coast. And she moved down to the Australian sport in 1992 under coach Jim Crowley, and that was really good. Mesdames and Messieurs, l'hymne de la victoire de l'Australie. Ladies and gentlemen, the victory anthem of Australia. <laughs> Medals presented by Mr. Michael Pennell, first place champion.